Legend of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeVore. Has anybody seen the sports page? I think it's over there on the chair. Can I be excused, please, Mom? Yes, of course, dear. Oh, David, hey, wait a minute. Let me take a look at your sleeves there. Oh, Ozzy, look at this. Hmm? I say, look at this hole in David's sleeve. We're going to have to do something to get rid of those darn moths. I bet you tore it on a nail. I did not. No, there's a moth hole. I found another small one in your father's top coat. You better take that off, David, before it gets any bigger. Has anybody seen the sports page? I think it's over there in the chair. How do you get rid of malls, Mom? Well, that's a good question, dear. They have regular companies, I believe, that fumigate the closets for you. We never had any trouble before. How do they eat through cloth? Well, I think it's the eggs that cause all the trouble. Isn't that right, Ozzy? Hmm? Uh, uh, no, thanks. No more eggs. They were delicious. <laughs> the sports page is over there on the chair. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Do with what? With moths. Can I be excused, please? I can't follow this conversation. <laughs> I don't blame you. Where are you going this morning? Oh, no place. Just out with the fellas. Well, don't you know where you're going? We haven't decided yet, Mom. All right, I wish you wouldn't pump the boy like that. I'm not pumping him. I just want to know where he's going and who he's going with. Well, don't worry about me, Mom. I'm very resourceful. Well, I hope so. Of course he is. Thanks, Pop. Pop? Yeah? What does resourceful mean? <laughs> Why don't you look up in the dictionary if you don't know what it means? That's okay. I think I know what it means anyway. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, what does it mean? Come to think of it, I guess I don't know what it means. Well, then, why don't you look it up? I guess I'm just too lazy. <laughs> well, that's a good answer. I may not be resourceful, but I'm lazy and I'm honest. At least that's something. <laughs> you have the paper over there? On the chair? I just gave you the sports section. No, I'll give it back to you in just a minute. Woman's page is on the back of it. I don't want to read about the fights last night. Well, how about this in Abigail Cabot's column? Mm -hmm. She's found a sure way of getting rid of moths. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, now, wait a minute. I'm just giving you a practical example of resourcefulness. Now, you want to read Abigail Cabot's column, and I want to read about last night's fight. So I'll merely tear old Abigail out. There you are. Right there. Read all about it. Smart idea. When you're through reading Abigail's column, would you turn it over and read me about the fights? Where have you been? Oh, hi. I'm sorry, wasting my breath trying to give Thorny a little advice. What about? Oh, he's worried about absolutely nothing. Seems Will is running around with some older boys that Thorny doesn't like. Thorny doesn't have enough confidence in the son to let him use his own judgment and select his friends. Well, sounds like you two had quite an argument. No, there was no argument at all. I told Thorny what I thought he ought to do, so he's going to go right ahead and do what he wanted to do in the first place. <laughs> well, at least you came out even. After all, you've got to have a little confidence in your children. Thorny doesn't seem to realize we have a couple of growing young men in our midst. Were you looking for me, Pop? <laughs> Hi, son. The mailman just put this for you, Pop. Oh, this is a surprise. It's postmark New Jersey. Maybe it's from Grandma Nelson. See. Letter. <laughs> well, come on, as long as you've made this a community project, what does it say? Well, it's from a guy I went to school with back home. 
You may be surprised to learn that I am in the business of manufacturing pipes. We have a special model called a varsity letter, and since I imagine your older boy David must be in college by now, I am sending one to him with the initial D on it. I hope he likes it. Hey, how about that? Careful, David. Evidently thinks David's quite a bit older than he really is. Oh, yes, evidently. Let me see it. Boy, take your hands off it, will you? I don't want to get any finger marks on it. I'm going to see what it looks like in the mirror. I want to see what it looks like in your mouth. <laughs> How about that, giving David a pipe? Well, it was thoughtful of him. Oh, oh, sure. I'd just say he probably figures David's a lot older than he really is. See, that's not an uncommon thing for people to misjudge the age of other people's children. You think I ought to take the pipe away from David? Well, he did give it to him. Oh, yes, well, I don't mean uh, permanently. But I mean, do you think maybe I ought to just uh, keep the pipe until David is old enough to, to smoke? Oh, oh uh, come to think of it, David probably uh, never will smoke. Uh, that is, he won't be much interested in it, because kids usually follow after their parents and things like that, and I'm not much of a smoker. So, uh, as I say, chances are uh, David might not even smoke at all. You are going to let him make his own decision, though, aren't you? Oh, yes, certainly. After all, it's up to David to make his own decision about a thing like that. Uh, if he wants to smoke, he, he can just go ahead and smoke. When he reaches the, the proper age, of course. How old is that? Oh, say 29 or 30. <laughs> Hello, my boy. What the heck are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm smoking. Smoking what, air? Here, read some of your comic books. Okay, I can wait until you finish. I'm not interested in the comic books. Have you seen the morning paper? Well, if you're looking for the funnies, they're downstairs. Who cares about the funnies? I was interested in the financial page. <laughs> what the heck are you doing now? Blowing smoke rings, what do you think? Looks like you're blowing your top. I'm just practicing, that's all. Later, when I graduated from college and I'm all through with athletics, I'm gonna smoke a pipe. You look pretty silly to me, boy. Nobody asked your opinion. Only a dope sits around smoking on an empty pipe. Never mind half pint. Pipe. How about letting me have a puff? Sorry, Shorty, you're too young. I suppose you think you're a big man or something with that pipe. Yeah, I think so. I think you're pretty envious, too. I am not. You are, too? I am not. Oh, you're not, huh? No, I'm not. What does envious mean, anyway? You're jealous of my pipe. I am not. You are, too? I am not. Listen, I can get all the pipes I want to for Miggy Magoo. What makes you think he can get any pipes for Miggy? Because his father's a plumber. <laughs> well, I sure get off some good ones, boy. <laughs> uh, you think so? Hope you don't mind if I just ignore you. Stop blowing smoke in my eyes, will you? <laughs> what are you hanging around here for, anyway? I just want to see whether you're going to smoke that pipe or not. I got a very good reason for not smoking it yet. You've got two very good reasons, Mom and Pop. You're not supposed to smoke a pipe until you've broken it in. Why don't you give it to me? I'm pretty good at breaking things. <laughs> you gonna put some tobacco in it now? Nope, just cleaning it. If you aren't gonna smoke it, what are you gonna do with it? That's my business. I'll bet you never do anything with it. Just stick around, sonny boy. You may be surprised. No, he's still running around the neighborhood showing off his new pipe. What do you think we ought to do about it? In what way? Well, should we let him keep it? Oh, sure, Harriet. After all, he can't hurt anything just walking around with a pipe in his mouth, as long as it's empty. And you don't think you'd be tempted to try smoking it? No, no, of course not. 
After all, you have to have a little confidence in your children. Besides, I can always phone the drugstore and tell them not to sell them any tobacco. I'm sure they wouldn't anyway. Sure. And I'm sure David wouldn't try to buy any either. No, of course he wouldn't. Of course not. We're both silly to be worrying about this. David's only having a little harmless fun showing off his pipe. By tomorrow, he'll have forgotten about it. You know how kids are. Yes, you're probably right. Oh, sure. <laughs> I had a pipe when I was a boy, too. I was even younger than David. It was a big old corncob pipe. Couldn't find any tobacco, so I loaded it up with paper. It was fun for a while, but in a couple of months, I'd forgotten all about it. A couple of months? Well, it took about that long for my eyebrows to grow back in. <laughs> the heck are you trying to do? Start a sandstorm? <laughs> yeah, I must admit you look very fetching in that outfit. Well, thanks, thanks. Captain had to go to a club meeting and I was sort of drafted into cleaning the house. Well, that seems only fair since you're the guy who messes it up most of the time. Yeah, that's practically <laughs> the same thing Captain said. <laughs> By the way, have you spoken to Will about this kid, you know, this older boy's been running around with a boy you didn't like, uh, uh, Buzzy. I certainly did, Oz. I talked cold turkey to him. Really laid it right on the line. Oh, good for you. I simply said to him, Will, I don't like this Buzzy Banks kid. I don't think he's the right type of boy for you to be friends with. I think he's a bad influence, and I don't want you to see him anymore. Now, oh, is that perfectly clear? I hope you told Will to get a haircut. <laughs> I know, Oz, you don't quite approve of my high-handed manner, and you think it's a little dictatorial, but it sure works. Oh, no, no, no. I think you have a perfect right to discipline your boy any way you see fit. Oz, a boy respects his father more if you get a little tough with him. Yeah. You gotta let the kid know who's the boss in the house. Oh, oh, sure, sure. And Will really knows who is now, believe me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you do. <laughs> don't let my domestic outfit fool you. Behind this apron there beats the heart of iron. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, I wanted to ask you. What's David doing with a pipe? Or am I telling tales out of school? Oh, no, no, no. We know all about that, Thorny. It was a gift from an old friend of the family's. Yeah, a fine friend. Oh, no, no, no. This fellow's a... so might say sort of a traveling man. He, he goes all over the country. It's okay, Oz. My family knows a few unsavory characters, too. <laughs> well, there's nothing unsavory about this guy. Just happened to think that Dave is a little older than he really is. I think it's darn nice for the guy to send Dave a pipe. Well, if I were you, I'd certainly take the pipe away from the boy. Well, what for, Thorny? I have confidence in David. <laughs> Look, you have your methods and I have mine. That's an old difference of opinion we've been talking about. Well, I'll tell you this much. You'll never see my boy Will smoking a pipe. David isn't smoking the pipe, Thorny. He's just showing it off to his friends in the neighborhood. That's all. Okay, okay, Oz, if you say so. So harm and a kid walking around with an empty pipe in his mouth. Nothing, nothing. An empty pipe is perfectly harmless. Well, I'll guarantee you David will never put tobacco in it. Well, I'm certainly glad you told me that. Frankly, I was a little worried. Worried about what? Well, when I was down at the drugstore buying some furniture polish, David came in and bought a can of old castaway. Old castaway? What's that? It's a very cheap pipe tobacco. I understand they make the stuff out of lint from the pockets of old Confederate uniforms. <laughs> It couldn't possibly have been David. Oh, look, Oz, it was David, all right. If the boy's gonna smoke, why don't you give him a decent allowance so he could get some good tobacco? I don't believe it, Thorny. In the first place, a druggist wouldn't sell tobacco to a miner. Well, David had a good reason for buying it. I heard the excuse he gave the druggist. You seem to know an awful lot about what David was doing. Well, Oz, I was right there in the drugstore, and I couldn't help overhearing where I was hiding behind the soda fountain. <laughs> In other words, you were spying on the boy. No, I wasn't spying. I just thought you might want to know, that's all. You say he had an excuse for buying the tobacco? That's right. A very logical excuse. I heard him tell the druggist he wanted for his mother. <laughs> and moving his family friend sent Harriet a pipe, too. Very funny. I just can't believe David would do a thing like that. Oz, I wouldn't worry about it. Kids are just naturally curious. Well, I bet you in a couple of days, David throws that pipe away. He'll throw it away a lot sooner than that if he tries a pipe full of old castaway. <laughs> Disillusion. It's bad enough that he bought the tobacco without making up a big phony story about it. Gee whiz, Oz, I didn't think he'd take this so seriously. David's a fine boy. Doesn't mean to do any harm. Oh, of course he's a fine boy, Barney. It's not his fault, it's mine. It's always the parents' fault. I missed out here somewhere. 
I've just been too soft for the boy. Have you seen David? He left the house a little while ago. Why, is something wrong? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid this pipe business has gotten a little out of hand. Oh, I don't think so, dear. Oh, now wait a minute. I, I wish you were right, but unfortunately you're not. I, I, I know better. Well, I want you just to sit here calmly and not get excited. Yeah. Well? Thorny was down at the drugstore, and he saw David buy a can of pipe tobacco. Oh? Harriet, I said Thorny was down at the drugstore, and he saw David buy a can of pipe tobacco. Yes, dear, I heard you. Well, how can you just sit there so calmly? Well, that's what you told me to do. <laughs> he not only saw David buy a can of pipe tobacco, old castaway pipe tobacco, but David told the druggist he was buying it for you. That's right, he was. <laughs> now, Harry. Harry. Harry, if you're just trying to say this to protect the boy. Oh, no, really, dear. I asked David to go down and buy me a can of very cheap tobacco. You really did? Yes. I got the idea from Abigail Cabot's column. Look, you see these little white bags? Well, uh, what about them? Well, you fill them with tobacco. And you hang them in the clothes closet, and they keep the moths away. How about that? And I was really worried there for a minute. You mean you really thought David had taken up smoking a pipe? No, I was afraid you had. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about either one of us. David got rid of his pipe. Oh, wow. When did this happen? I don't know. He told me he gave it away a little while ago. Oh, well, I, I knew something like this had happened. Didn't I tell you it would? Yes, you did, dear. Sure. Uh, who'd he give it to? I didn't ask him. I was just happy to get it out of the house. Yeah, I, I guess you're right at that. I'm all right, Pop. How are you? <laughs> Ricky, where'd you get that pipe? Well, David gave it to me. Neat, huh? Oh, fine. Want to see me smoke it? Well, you mean to say you've been smoking that pipe? Sure, that's what a pipe's for. <laughs> Gee, how come, Pa? Well, you justified our faith in you today. After all, your mother knew you had that pipe, and yet she sent you down to the store to buy a can of tobacco. Gee, I don't mind running in here in Vermont. I, I know you don't, David, but a lot of boys, just out of idle curiosity, might have been tempted to try some of the tobacco. You weren't, though. Oh, I was tempted, Pa. Well, perhaps you were. However, the important thing is that you didn't yield to the temptation. Oh, I know. I thought about it. Then something very powerful and strong held me back. I know, son. That was your conscience. No, I think it was my nose when I got a whiff of that old castaway. <laughs> Yes, baby, for you. 